The second presentation is from Lean Frog Business Solutions. They were founded by husband and wife team Byron and Sherry Hedrick in Huntsville, Alabama in 2009 and incorporated in 2012. Growing from a sole proprietorship to a corporation, the Hedricks have built a team of 12 highly skilled professionals from education and industry to allow cross-pollination of best practices to help serve public education clients. <coughs> Lean Frog's unique approach to assessment and improving education combines a deep understanding of educational functions with Lean Six Sigma thinking systems and tools. The result has been the creation of a premier public education consulting firm committed to improving the lives of students. Please welcome Lean Frog Business Solutions. Good evening. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, great. I want to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the committee for allowing us the opportunity to give you <laughs> some more information about our services and particularly uh, the scope of, the, the, of this project and how we would do that work. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, a brief presentation just on who we are, how we do things, uh, go into the detail. Uh, of uh, both the operational and uh, organizational review piece and the compensation piece. Uh, I'd also like to then go into a couple of examples of some of the work we've done. Uh, and, and then, of course, allow time for you guys to answer any questions. Uh, I'm Byron Hedrick. I'm the president and co-founder uh, of Lean Frog. Uh, with me this evening is my wife, Dr. Sherry Hedrick. Uh, also, uh, Ms. Chastity White, uh, and then we also have John Higginbotham from our team. Um, I'm just going to jump in, uh, and then uh, I look forward to hearing your questions and, and kind of walking through everything. Uh, I'm assuming I can just share my screen here. Let's see. Is that showing? Can you guys see that? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so. We started the company about 15 years ago with a, our mission when we did that was we wanted to improve public education by improving the efficiency uh, and the quality of education. And we do that focusing on people, process, and technology and balancing those resources to allow the most uh, investment to be put into the classroom. Uh, and to do that, we use a proprietary tool set uh, that we put together. Now, Lean Six Sigma has been around. It's, a lot of industries use Lean Six Sigma. We have honed uh, our approach just for public education over the last 15 years. What that means is Lean Six Sigma is really two different improvement methods. Uh, Lean is more about uh, making sure you're doing the right things. It's about uh, being as efficient as possible, eliminating things that get in the way of what is the most highest value for your organization. Uh, whereas Six Sigma is, a, is an approach that really improves effectiveness and quality. It's about reducing variation and improving consistency. When you put these two together, what you, what you get is a really good uh, approach to analyzing an organization and then driving improvement in the organization. Um, we're going to give you a nice, a nice thick assessment uh, document, but really why people pay us is not only do we do the analyzing, but we try to bring your people with us. Uh, and that, that's the heart of, of Lean Six Sigma. Uh, there's an adage that says we, we see together, we learn together, we do together. So our approach uh, involves your people, it involves the data, and it involves us walking through what gets in their way. What, what is driving your cost up? Uh, what makes it hard for them to meet the needs of your community? Uh, and we do that through that Lean Six Sigma approach. We also apply it to our own business. Uh, so over the last 15 years, we've been focused on optimizing our internal processes and our methods 
Uh, and you'll see uh, on the next slide, we, we've worked, we work with a lot of the districts over just the last five years, uh, mainly Alabama, Tennessee, and Louisiana. We do some work in Mississippi, we do some work in Georgia, some work in Arkansas, but our, our hearts and spirit really are in these three states. Uh, we work for from school systems that are rural, have one campus with three schools, to some of the largest school systems in the nation, such as Memphis, Shelby County, uh, Mobile, Alabama, even East Baton Rouge uh, in Louisiana. I'm not gonna go through all these systems, but as you can see, we work with a lot of systems in your local area. And uh, again, we have a, a wide berth. Not only do we work with school systems, we also work with uh, departments of education. We, we have current contracts with the Alabama Department of Education, we're working with the Louisiana Department of Ed and their early child care group right now. We've done work in the past with the Tennessee Department of Education, not working on schools, but helping them improve their internal processes and systems. Um, the team, uh, let me share that with you. Again, here, here's Mississippi as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't miss it. I didn't mention too much about Mississippi uh, and the Department of Ed there. Uh, the team, again, uh, the four main members are, are here on the call today. And then we have a support staff. Uh, now, when it comes to site work, that is typically uh, the four members, uh, you see the, the four team members uh, at, the, at the top here. Uh, sometimes Mary assists uh, with that work as well if we, if we think we need more people to accomplish something. Uh, the focus uh, of this group uh, is kind of cross-functional. Uh, we have a background in uh, human resources. We have a background in facilities management. We, we have a background in education. Um, we, we basically have touched uh, over the last 15 years and worked with every function within a school system. Uh, we're not necessarily education experts. We're Lean Six Sigma experts. We believe that you and your team and your people are experts. We just have to listen to them and work with them to drive the improvements that the district needs so it can be sustainable and successful over time. When it comes down to the assessment that we have put together, it, we're looking at doing a two-pronged approach. The first one is focused on the organizational piece, which is both organizational and operational for us. If we're going to find cost savings, we have to get down into the operational level, how you guys do work. Uh, uh, we can't just be cursory. Uh, we can't just stop at a job description. We have to look at your core processes. Uh, and then the other phase is looking at compensation. Uh, and we have split the project. I will be the project lead over the organizational review piece. Ms. Chastity White uh, is, will be the, review, uh, the project lead over the compensation piece. Uh, and of course, we will work together because we often find as we're, as we're working, we're, we're seeing ways that things come together and it makes better sense for us to, to share those and, and work with the district. Now, I'm gonna go over kind of some details about each of those legs, the organizational leg and the compensation leg. From an organizational review perspective, we, we focus really on three big things. We want to see what the organization structure is. Is it, is it a good structure? Now for us, what we look at is that form should follow function. And what that means is we, we want to understand the strategy that your district is pursuing. We want to understand the challenges that your district is faced with. And then we want to look at, well, how is the organization structure in driving those strategic objectives? How is it focused on being able to handle those challenges that it's facing? Uh, we look at alignment, we look at communication, we look at accountability. We also look at performance. We look at performance over trending over time. We also look at comparative performance. We look at performance compared to different standards, depending on what department or function within uh, the district we're reviewing. And then we want to get into your internal processes, how the work is done. We want to know what kind of waste are, and for us, that we have both operational waste 
and organizational ways. I'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Uh, but we want to understand basically what are the hurdles that prevents your district from being as efficient as possible. Uh, and when we, when we bring all that together, it helps us understand what improvements need to be made. Now, as we work uh, through this process, we're going to be uh, well, we're going to be taking so we do something called a job analysis questionnaire where we want all your employees to participate if possible in that. Uh, from that, those we're going to review those. Anything that's noted unique, uh, we, we we may want to meet with a uh, select individuals. We're going to meet with all your leaders. We're going to want to do some focus groups. That's all around understanding the structure. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to come back in after we've done some performance data. We're going to come back in and we're going to walk through your core processes in each of your departments uh, to understand how work is done, how you're applying resources, technology, facilities. We want to see how all that comes together. Um, and as we do this, as we work with your people, as we interview your people, we're going to see things and we're going to point them out. Uh, what most uh, is valuable about our approach, uh, and this is the feedback from our clients, is that when we're finished with assessment, we lay a foundation where we have uh, the majority of your, your, your people, your leaders, your board uh, in alignment with what needs to be done and how we can proceed going forward to get it done to drive the, uh, meet the challenges and drive the improvements that we need to have happen. The detailed analysis, we, we do a lot of work. We'll look at retirement eligibility, again, performance uh, over uh, time, performance in comparative to peers, both local, regional, and national. We'll look at, we'll do a span of control analysis of your leadership roles. We'll look at staffing levels across your departments. We'll look at how you're using technology and resource utilization. We're gonna look at those functional uh, co uh, area core processes uh, we're, and all of this is going to help us identify organizational and operational waste. And from that, we'll be able to identify improvements. And then from there, we'll work with your team to put together. Usually, um, I, I say this, I, you have to realize I'm, a, I'm an engineer, but I'm also a, a son of a farmer. So my grandpa used to say, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. And that's what it comes down to. Uh, we might find an issue. And we can solve that problem six or seven ways. <coughs> we need to work with your team to, to walk through the pros and cons of each of those approaches to define exactly what's the best approach for your district. We do that through uh, what we call, when, we're, when we've got all the data and we've got the findings, we, we run that through a workshop. When we first start the project, we're going to want to set up a project steering committee uh, and in that project steering committee, we're going to want to meet with them uh, about the findings. We're also going to want to meet with those department leaders uh, where we see the opportunities. And again, we will develop detailed recommendations that are actionable following those findings. Uh, and we we'll put that together into what we call an improvement roadmap for the district, which will prioritize not only what, what things should be done first, but what things can be done together how hard they are to do and how or how easy they are to do we will we will define that for you along with our recommendations again we're going to be looking at operational waste and we're going to be looking at organizational waste operational waste we're going to look at what we call procedure waste that's that's reliability issues that's sub optimization uh, processes, it's, it's duplication of effort, it's where there's things being done manually. Uh, we're going to look at people waste, where, and that's like waiting. It's, it's where we're over-processing, where we're doing more than we should. We're going to look at assignment waste, motion waste. We're also going to look at information waste. Is the information that's needed to do a good job available? Is the information needed to make the right decisions uh, where it needs? broken down so it's understandable. We're going to look, is, are, are we missing information? Are there things that you just aren't checking that need to be reviewed to help you dial in and drive the district? We're also going to look at asset waste. We're going to look at overburdening assets, 
uh, we're gonna, which would be, for instance, over capacity. We're gonna look at where you're under burdening or where you're not using, utilizing it enough. Uh, we're gonna look at uh, transporting waste. We're gonna look at what uh, your inventory levels, all those pieces as well. On the organizational side, we're gonna wanna look to see if you have a, an issue with strategic focus. We're gonna look at your structures to see if they're effective. We're gonna look at your processes. Do you have processes? Are they documented? Are they being followed? We're gonna look at your reward systems and we're gonna look at your ownership and accountability measures. This is about a six- Ryan, Yes. You emphasize the people waste. We're not talking about positions, but sometimes yeah. when people hear that term, people waste. <laughs> Yeah, for us, people are an asset. What, what we want to do is m remove the things that are getting in the way of, of, of the work they do. Uh, and, you know, right now, a lot of school systems are seeing uh, heavy attrition. So the question is, uh, what do we need to do to, to right-size the district, yet at the same time take care of our people uh, and put the most money we can back into our classrooms? Again, for us, it's about taking care of the students, your staff, and the community. Uh, the timeline for this is six months. Um, we will meet. Uh, now, we, we meet throughout this process, but we have a formal meeting each month uh, to review uh, the project. We use a tool, and I'll just show you one of these, uh, called a four up chart. Uh, let me zoom that up a little bit. And, and what this lets you do, you'll have one of these for the, the organizational piece, you'll have one for the compensation leg two, but it basically shows you the project schedule in a lot more detail than what I'm showing on the screen today. It'll talk about what's been completed. It'll talk about any issues we're seeing or any risk. Again, we wanna address them early and mitigate them before they actually turn into the issues in the project. And we'll also talk about what's coming up next and where uh, we need to inform your people or, or get support from your people. So this, this, is a, this is a Lean Six Sigma approach of giving a quick snapshot so everyone can be on the same page. Um, and we, we use usually just a 30 minute meeting with that project steering committee uh, and, and we share it uh, and we answer in 15 minutes of that is us answering questions from the district or, or, or working on something together. It's very quick and focused uh, on how we uh, provide information to the district. Let me get back to the presentation. Uh, again, we, those are the job analysis. You've got, we do interviews virtually and we do uh, on-site interviews as well. We like doing interviews with employees on site, but what we find is that most people have a hard time coordinating calendars, especially in a district your size. So what we'll probably do is a combination of some on site interviews and then some virtual. Uh, we will meet with every one of your leaders and we will pull uh, employees as needed based off of those job analysis questionnaires uh, into meetings. We will also meet with each functional area not the leader, but the whole team that's working to walk through those core processes so we can get down into the details of what they're doing. Uh, and again, we have this workshop where we look at findings and opportunities and discuss the right way to approach those findings to drive the improvement. On the compensation, three things we look at there. We look at the program structure. Uh, we look at your external market value, and we also look at your internal equity. We want to make sure that, that we have not just what people are being paid, but is the structure correct? Are we going to accelerate people correctly? Are, are the jobs valued correctly and so forth to the district? Um, we're going to do a couple of different analysis types uh, when it comes to pay. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to look at your schedules compared to market. Okay, so we want to understand your schedules and, and, and how that works. We also want to get into incumbents and how they compare uh, to market. And then we also want to look at how those schedules compare to other schedules. So when we say market for education only positions, that's going to be uh, the, your local peers that you're competing with. 
Uh, now for other positions like IT, maintenance, and those, not only are we going to look at those local peers, we're also going to look at uh, national surveys and regional salary surveys to look at what local industry is doing because you will be competing with industry for those non-educational positions. And we put those together. We, put the, we take the education, we took, take the uh, local market, uh, non-educational market, we kind of put those together and we develop what we call a, a market consensus to help you see how, because as a school district, there's things you guys have that a factory or a plant down the street's not gonna have. So we, we wanna make sure we take into account some of those things when we look at that consensus. Uh, I'm gonna show you more detail on that in just a second when we get into the examples of the work. The other thing that's very important is instead of us just handing you back, hey, here's the market and here's how you compare, um, we're going to look, we're going to work with you to develop what we call a, comp a strategic compensation strategy. Uh, and that will be based off of your needs. It'll be, we'll look at your attrition. We'll look at who's going to be leaving the district with their retirement. We're going to be looking at uh, the, 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 your historical enrollment numbers, your projections forward. We're going to put all that together to help us understand where we need to focus and, and with compensation in the district and how how we want to design those schedules and that that once we develop that compensation philosophy so we'll have the market data we develop the compensation philosophy then we'll work with you to make recommendations where we bring those two together um this again about six months again we'll be reporting now, again, we say monthly for the formal report out with that four up chart, but uh, the reality is uh, with the compensation side, what typically happens is uh, we, we will sort uh, the, the, the compensation into functions and usually Chastity and her team will meet monthly. Uh, once we have that work, once it gets flowing, once we have the data, she'll meet monthly reviewing each section of that. Because uh, Chastity can can, can kind of basically uh, she she can she can toast you with data. She'll give you so much data it, you can't take it all in at once. So what we do is we'll we'll start with one set of employees and we'll work through those with you so you can get a deep understanding of the data instead of setting in a three hour four hour single meeting where you, you just frost over because we want you to understand the data and again we're going to tie it back to that compensation philosophy. That's critical. So even though we're talking, I mark here on these, the, uh, the four up each month, there's other meetings besides just that little 30 minute four up chart to keep in mind. Uh, again, the reason we started this company, we wanted to do the best by students, staff, and communities. Uh, the first, um, I did not start Lean Frog to be focused on education. Uh, it's just uh, I've done it over 15 years because about a year into the business, I had an opportunity to work with a school system and I got to use Lean Six Sigma. We saved them about $19 million um, at, over a three year stint uh, applying Lean Six Sigma and that kind of got the wheel spinning that, hey, we need to be doing this for schools across the Southeast. And, and that's why we, we do what we do. And, it was funny in the district I just mentioned, the state had actually taken them over. The state had cut uh, a lot of positions uh, just arbitrarily to save money. We ended up saving the $19 million and we brought half of the positions back in, in the work we did. Um, I, I have some work examples. I have an older assessment from EBR. They're close to you guys, but this is back from 2019, so it, it, it's fine to share. I'm not going to go into every piece of the assessment, but I just want to show you some things we did. And EBR, in this initial assessment, we identified somewhere uh, around one and a half to $2.7 uh, million in annual savings. And those savings were centered around uh, we did uh, reduce some leadership positions. We did that through natural attrition. We developed a, a, a plan uh, for consolidating those through natural attrition. We, uh, um, was, we were able to set up some processes for grant, uh, approaching grants to enhance revenue, something they were a little bit deficient in at the time. 
We optimized, came up with ways to optimize our internal work methods. We reduced inter-parish uh, travel expenses. Uh, we, consult, we, we put together a plan to allow them to consolidate central office locations. Uh, we improved their software system integrations. We uh, eliminated duplication of effort uh, and also software systems because we, we found systems that weren't being deployed correctly. Uh, and we also uh, eliminated and reduced in manual processing and paper costs through the district. That, that's some good examples. We went, one thing we identified in this assessment was we, we saw they had a problem in transportation. Uh, they brought us back in uh, to focus on transportation and we were able to identify another $3 million uh, in uh, improving transportation uh, by uh, optimizing their bus routes. Uh, that's the level of detail we get to with our clients. Um, a couple things I want to show you regarding that. Again, I won't go, th this whole presentation, this, this assessment doc, this single assessment document's about 305 pages long. I, I don't want to, um, well, I can't walk you through all that. But I want to give you kind of an understanding of when we say detailed recommendations, what, what we're talking about, so you kind of understand. Um, can you guys see that, or do I need to run it as a slideshow? Yeah, we can see it. Yes, sir. We're, well, we can see it. Okay, cool. Uh, so, um, again, now we will produce for you an executive summary for the board. Uh, sometimes we'll produce documents we're sharing with the public if that's what you want. This, this is the full-blown assessment I'm showing. So we do start, before getting into all the data we got down in here, we do start by just walking through those um, recommendations and those recommendations are there's general recommendations or which are broad about the whole district and then there's recommendations by functional area okay so the fir first ones and again i'm not going to read all these to you but our recommendations we break them down into the why the what, and the how so like this one was about their strategic planning they they, they needed to update their strategic plan so we walked them through uh, why they need to do it, and then what process to use to do it so they could do it internally. We, op we gave them optimization for their organizational structure, uh, for their leadership, uh, applying a matrix-based organization, which uh, improved communication and reduced cost. Uh, we walked them through uh, different ways to align this. Not shown in this presentation are, are actually organizational charts we produced and, and delivered to the, the district that they could use as detailed guides. Um, we uh, analyzed their technology use. We saw a lot of uh, gaps in technology. So one thing we said, hey, you gotta, not only do you gotta fix those gaps, you, we need to enhance your technology planning. Um, we walked through, uh, they, they weren't measuring their performance in some areas. We walked through what they needed to be doing there. Uh, they didn't have any kind of continuous improvement group. We standardized uh, their document storage of records. Uh, we developed a virtual work guidelines. This is pre-COVID, but because of EBR and the size and having multiple locations for their central office, they were spending a lot of money driving around. So we created standards for them to be able to work virtually and reduce the cost of that travel. Uh, we identified that there was a bigger issue in transportation. Again, they had us come back and we addressed it. We identified some energy savings opportunities. That's kind of broad. And then we got into some specific functional details uh, in human resources, technology, and business operations. These were three areas where, where there was a lot of opportunities. Um, and these are three areas that affected the whole district. Uh, it, it affected uh, not only the central office, it affected the schools. Um, so we, we looked at uh, some compliance issues. We, we addressed low substitute fill rates. We addressed some automated, some human resource processes, uh, timekeeping and payroll processes, uh, technology work order request processes, software utilization issues, 
accounts payable processing, uh, automated procurement processing. Uh, those are the kind of things we came up with. To do this work, we also came back and said, okay, here's your timeline for what it would take, the time invested. We also said, okay, here's your priorities. Here's your first priority, here's your second priority. These are ones you should start now. These are ones you should implement over 12 to 16 months. We even went out to, you know, things beyond 16 months, what need to be offered. Um, as far as the assessment goes, again, we, we review retirement eligibility, lots of trending staffing levels. Uh, and we actually even dive all the way into, um, get down here, sorry. We actually get into individual performance, like custodial uh, cost per student, custodial work uh, cost per square foot, maintenance uh, cost, uh, very detailed. Uh, we get into the processes. We identify waste in the processes and uh, how they're doing the work. Again, we have to get to this level to be able to give you good detailed recommendations. Uh, I'm not gonna show you a Louisiana school system for compensation but I will show you a recent one that we just finished in Alabama of a small school system. Um, again, here, uh, what I'd like to do is show you an example of, let's see, here, maintenance workers. So here is a breakdown of uh, the peers for this, for Dallas County. This is their peers. You can see we break it down by the number of hours they work for days. We look at the steps and their schedule. Uh, we show their, their, their rates. We show how the variance is. We, we do all, this is all peers, other school systems. The next thing we do is we pull regional data and we build that Marcus consensus range, right? That I was talking about that for, for jobs like maintenance. Uh, and you can see we, we, we review the salary and show where there's gaps in the salary. And we also look at the employees being paid and is there an issue with an employee? or not. Uh, for school, like for instance, let me jump down here. Yeah, let me get to like principal, assistant principal. Uh, there you won't have that market as far as the industry. You'll just have your local peers and how they're, they're paying. Uh, the nice thing is, um, in Louisiana, we have we have most of your peer data already in hand uh, because of other work we do uh, and across the state. Uh, but it's very detailed. Uh, and then, of course, we give you recommendations on, on what to do, uh, and we'll do that in such a way that you guys can do it yourself. Sometimes districts want us to come in and do that work for them. And if you need help, we can help, but we're not going to push you or try to push you to buy more from us only if you need us and you ask. But we will provide uh, recommendations by position, uh, how, to, how, how what best fits into that compensation philosophy, uh, which is not always market, keep that in mind, because uh, we're gonna look at your attrition rates and your retirements that are gonna be coming up uh, and your strategy to know what you need to focus on as a district. That's it for my presentation. Uh, I'd like to open it up for questions now. Would, would that work? Yes, that will work. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I've got a question on, uh, you, you said something about looking at our peers, um, you know, the different school districts around us. How do you get accurate information um, from our district, our different districts around us to compare to ours? Uh, from a performance perspective, uh, we have uh, we have some national uh, uh, third party surveys that, that that's what they focus on. From a regional perspective, uh, we have a database that we maintain that has uh, around about 120 peers across Alabama, and Louisiana, uh, Tennessee, and Mississippi. Uh, and that, that is the, uh, you know, like I showed you some of the, those metrics like uh, the cost per square feet, 
Um, it, it, we, we have those level metrics in detail. The reason we have so much is we, we, the districts that we work with usually want us to update. So we, what we learned uh, uh, several years ago is we need to build a database and, and keep our, our data. Uh, as far as local peers go, again, I'm talking about performance data here. As far as local, we will use state data too, but the state isn't going to be able to dial in enough. And usually there's also, when you report state data, uh, uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it. So uh, it's not always um, apple to apple, if you will. It, so, uh, but so we have to, we don't just pull a lot of stuff from the, from the uh, state. We actually use the, our internal database and then our local contacts in each region uh, to, and, and the reason they share it with us is because they want to see that whole, that data too. Does, does that make sense? It helps everybody. Now that's that's performance. Now compensation. <laughs> uh, Chastity may want to chime in a little bit there uh, on it. Uh, that's her belly week. Sure. Um, so yeah, we actually are able to get peer salary schedules when it comes to um, that. But I know part of the the thought also, I'm assuming, is on making sure that the jobs are comparable. So we actually um, work with um, those peer districts to get as much information we can get about their organization um, structure and their job descriptions. And so we try to make sure that we're comparing um, truly apples to apples jobs like by looking at the work, not the titles. Um, so that's, we spent a good bit of time uh, making sure that we have a very accurate comparison when we do those jobs. Um, and that slide was shown about assistant principals, you know, we also look at making sure we understand the size of those um, schools and those peers as well as your size schools. Um, so we bring that as well as a comparable, you know, set of data um, for any of our compensation as well. So. Uh, so yeah, was that that you uh, do work samples or we'd like to have a, I'd like to have a final work sample. Um, you, yeah. I see that you also did Ascension. Is that too early in the game to get a copy of it? Uh, I'll just have to, uh, I'll have to ask permission. Uh, I don't think Ascension would have a problem. Uh, they just switched superintendents. I think Dr. Uh, well, Edith is now the superintendent there. I'll, I'll reach out to her. We'll mark them confidential because we won't want you to share them uh, publicly with everyone. But uh, if, if, and again, I, I, I think that there won't be an issue more than likely. Uh, I'll be happy to reach out to her and then send that over to you tomorrow. Will that work? Or I'll send them to uh, our pet point of contact, rather. Works. I was looking at the hours and um, 460 hours. You're the you're the main guy, and I see that you're only set, scheduled for sixty hours. It's just a week. Well, that's yeah. a week and a half work week for me. Uh, yeah, the uh, a little bit more. The, uh, I'm the head guy. Well, what? And again, I'm I, I'm I, I got to be clear here. Uh, I, I'm I'm the head guy, but my team Chasty has been with me since I can't say day one because she, she was my first employee, but I started without employees. So she's been with me that length of time. John Higginbotham, who is uh, also a certified Lean Six Sigma guy, he's been with me, I think he corrected me the other day, because I think the other day I said nine years, and he spoke up and told me, no, it was 10. I've been here 10 years. Take into account all of it, please. Uh, and of course, my, my wife has been with me the whole time working with me. So this team is not, uh, I, I am. I don't want to discredit myself. I, I do know this stuff very well, but my team are, are very much experts. Uh, and what I do, and one thing's different from us, the way we design our, we, we, we will develop an assessment plan in detail. We'll share that with you, make sure you, you, you're comfortable with it. But that assessment plan, we have standardized the pieces of it. So you may say, I want this, good. I don't want that. So we take that out. The stuff you want, uh, we'll, 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 we have standardized both the processes and our systems internally to, to optimize the work. Again, we use our Lean Six Sigma. We, we have databases. We, we have um, standard applications that we've put together uh, to kind of help us be uh, fast at what we do. And the reason for that, I'll be honest, the first, you just asked about Ascension. 
uh, Ascension, uh, we did something similar for Ascension, and we were $20,000 higher. Now, that was a few years ago, though. Uh, and the, now we're, we're, we're less. And the reason we're less is because we have optimized our systems internally, and we've reflected that savings back to our customers. Earlier you mentioned... Yeah, yep. Oh, Thank sorry. You. Go ahead. Earlier you mentioned... Uh another process if we wanted to purchase that as well, but you weren't here to sell it, upsell us a bunch of stuff. No, I'm not trying to do that to what you. Else, I, I don't want to do that. What else uh, do you recommend to be part of the process that wasn't in your original bid? No, uh, it's just that what we might find uh, is, is, so we're going to identify uh, some cost savings, but like with that, with like East Baton Rouge, we knew there, they, there was an issue in transportation. But I couldn't tell them from this level of an assessment what to do to fix everything. Does that make sense? So we actually had to go in and just focus on uh, the bus routes, if that makes sense. And I actually gave back to them, not with something generic like, hey, you can cut 40 routes. We came back and said, hey, you need to merge route A and B. You need uh, to eliminate route C. Uh, it was very detailed information on what to do. Uh, so occasionally, uh, if we see, and they did not have the staff, even though we explained to them at the time, they only had one route person for regular routes and a part-time person doing sped routes. And you know how big EBR is, that, that they didn't have the, the people to, to dig in. So we came in and did that work for them and worked with their people. Uh, uh, to, to be able to get the detail. And again, you don't have to buy that from us. Again, we want to teach as much as we can. Uh, Lean Six Sigma is all about, a, it's about a method of continuous improvement. We want to encourage your people to think about it. At Ascension, uh, they ended up uh, actually going and getting some Lean Six Sigma training through a, a local hospital system uh, for free because the hospital let them come in as a public ed. I think EBR did the same thing. EBR ended up going and getting three green belts, uh, getting three, three uh, directors certified as green belts. And uh, there was some work I did at reviewing their projects and helping them along the way. But basically, we want to build in your organization some capacity. The assessment is a starting point. It's how we get everyone on the same page. Again, it's that we see together, we learn together, we do together. First thing we have to do is get everyone to understand what opportunities there are, we have to get everyone to understand what we need to be doing uh, for our students and our staff and our community. And then we can start implementing those things. But just jumping straight to fixing without bringing your people along, it, it's not going to be sustainable over time. I'm sorry if I talk too much. I'm an engineer, so I, you ask me the wrong question, I'll give you a ton of answers. So if I, if I go too far, just let me know. Well, I guess one of, one of my concerns, I guess, with a staff of eight and how busy y'all seem to be, it was a little bit, I guess, questions. Any other questions? Can't hear. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, I can't. Okay. okay. Uh, one of my, my questions is you have a staff of eight. I was a little bit concerned because uh, y'all seem to be really busy on taking on uh, another project and kind of a reassurance that, you know, you're able to take this on and get it done in six months. And then one other question I'll just fill in on this one is kind of a follow up on that. It seems like you do make recommendations, um, you do find the, the, you know, identify the issues, make recommendations. But I guess uh, my, my question is, are the recommendations full enough for us to be able to analyze and say, yeah, we can take those on or some of those. And I guess it's the follow up on the East Baton Rouge that were just so complex that they just decided to go ahead and, and, and bring y'all on because, you know, it was more deeper into the weeds and stuff like that than they wanted to undertake, so. Right, so what we, you asked two questions, so uh, I'm gonna start with your last one though first, and then I'll come back to the staffing piece, if that's okay. Uh, so we want you to be able to do something besides just say, we, we, we give the usually, I got to be careful how I say this because I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm I'm being overconfident. In most instances, uh, when our work is compared to other consultants' work, the level of detail we're providing 
is is a lot more. Uh, it's it's enough that you can do it. Uh, we want you to be able to do it, uh, and we want to get your people when we do those interviews, when we do those core process walkthroughs and things. We're going to get them excited about how they can fix some of those things that are getting in their way. Uh, it's not uncommon for between, uh, you know, like we, we, we may not be able to do all 13 department four visits in one week, right? Because it's going to take some time. So it may be something we have to do over a couple of weeks. It's not uncommon for us to, by the time we come back, that the first group we met was already started to do some things and want to show us some of the things they're doing. Uh, because as we go, we're going to be walking through, like, what is waste? How do we, how do we eliminate those things? We want, we, we'd like to train as we go. Again, we want to build some foundation for you so that when we're done, you can proceed. Um, our customers come back to us. Yeah, I'll be honest. Most of our customers, it, it may not be every, it may not be a continuous, but what they'll do, we'll hear from them in a few months. Hey, come help us with this now. Uh, and the reason for that is that the level of quality we provide uh, and our ability to work with their their staff and their boards uh, to keep everyone on the same page. So it, that, that's not uncommon. As far as um, the work goes, uh, there, there's, there's really 12 and a half FTEs. Uh, we, we have... Um, 11 full-time employees, and then we have three part-time employees. Uh, we're adding one more person in September, uh, full-time employee in, in September as well. Uh, they would not be on this project, but it, they would be uh, assisting with, with some other projects. We track um, our work and our, our labor uh, and we moderate how much work we can do uh, per quarter or per, per, um, for each semester. So we're, we have already held a spot in our schedules for this work. If we don't get it, I'll, I'll, we'll fill it. But uh, it, it's, it's not something that we take lightly in responding to the RFP. When, when we respond to the RFP, we slotted this work in. Um, again, if you if we don't get the work, that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll fill it, but then we won't overfill. Once I hit my hours for the the, the semester, we'll be we'll we'll, we'll 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 actually won't sell anything. Uh, Chastity hates me when I start shutting off the faucet, but uh, we, we we it's important that the quality of the work stays at the level that you guys feel comfortable uh, recommending me to other people. It's it's all about that in this business. Also, we've had clients where they'll say, hey, I want to start this next year or I want to start this next semester. So it's not always that everything starts immediately. With the RFPs, we follow the timeline that's outlined in the RFP, but we always work with the client to either compress a schedule or expand the schedule depending upon their needs. This is going by the RFP. Any other questions? Steve, yeah. anybody else? Please turn it on. Yes, I'm here. Um, yeah, Steve Link here, uh, board member district nine. Um, I asked the, the other group a couple of questions, so I feel it incumbent upon myself to ask y'all some of the similar ones. Um, as far as uh, cost savings, um, what, it, what is your average uh, cost savings for a group that you work with? Uh, it's as a percentage, let's say. Yeah, yeah. It, the percentages are hard. Uh, the, a district your size, again, it, it 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 really comes into how you guys are doing work. Like I said, the the district where I saved nineteen million dollars had uh, over a three-year period, they had 24,000 uh, students. Uh, the uh, East Baton Rouge, uh, again, you know the size of it. Uh, we focused in that, that first assessment and then we did some transportation work. We did some other work. It, it was just under 10 there. Um, 
it, it really depends on, on every, every district's the same. I, I can't guarantee uh, what you're going to see, but if you've not done anything like this before, uh, there's it's probably going to be uh, some good opportunity. Now, the question is, too, is uh, what's your stomach for implementing the savings that we find? Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you, you may find that, hey, this would save us a lot of money, but it's, it's not the right thing for our community, right? Uh, and again, that's why we have to come into that. That's why we want that project steering committee, and we want to be able to present those findings and, and hey, here's how we, we, we think you can fix this, Here, here's a, and, and really discuss that. Uh, and then bring in the leaders uh, that would be affected or working in those areas to, to get their inputs. That's the only way we can give you detailed recommendations that are uh, detailed enough that you can go implement. Gotcha. Um, another question. Uh, how many actual people from your group will be working in our area face-to-face, -face, let's say? Uh, it'll be, a, at a minimum, it's the four. Sometimes Mary will assist based off the, uh, the, the, the schedule and the workload. So uh, there'll be four consistent, which is everyone on this call today. Uh, and then Mary will also participate. Uh, virtually, uh, Miranda will participate in the meetings and, and some of those as well, some of those interviews and things as well, but she will not be on site. Okay, one last question. Um, accounts that you work simultaneously how, how, how do you work with other groups and us at the same time you, you how many got going at one time let's say well it, it's it's not necessarily the number of clients it's the size or scope of the work D does that make sense we do uh, probably on a average basis we do between 40 and 60 projects a year um but again uh some of those projects are small some of the some of them are, are, are large uh we're just now finishing up some work in uh saint landry uh we're, we're actually doing some board presentations next month uh on that uh that's that scope was was similar to yours it was it didn't have the, it doesn't have the operational piece that you have it just had the organizational piece um but, but it also had compensation. Uh, so that work's coming done. Uh, that's one reason we were wanting to, you know, this is, a, your, your timing's actually good for us. Uh, we will probably at any given point have somewhere around six to eight projects functioning though, on a stand, but they're different sizes. Okay, I If that makes that. sense, they're not your size. Um, just, just that the, my concern, I guess, making sure is that we have a good amount of face time it, together with us and our people and all of that because uh, again we've got a couple of us here that have been in education as former educators and others that have been on board for, for many many years but uh, I know all of them would agree that that being uh, a face to face is very important uh, yeah. it's nice that we're able to do that this, this this way but it really you don't get to know somebody and you don't get to know your people and your system until you're face to face yeah we agree we agree that's why what we do is uh, typically we'll, we'll do an advanced team meeting where uh, a couple of us will come down. Usually it's going to be me, uh, John, me, Chasty, uh will come down. And what we want to do is meet briefly with your leaders, trying to, to, to understand their departments a little bit. That's not the only meeting, but that, that, and we do that over a, a two to three day window. Uh, then we uh, will come back once we get the job analysis questionnaires in and we get some data. Uh, we'll we'll review all those and then we'll want to set up leader meetings to go over what's in the what we're seeing in the job analysis questionnaires. Um, those are usually a combination of virtual and on site. We do have a hard time sometimes getting everyone to commit to a, a window of opportunity. You will, uh, you know, like doing it on site for three days. Um, particularly with those meetings, because those meetings can go, uh, you know, an hour and a half or two hours. Uh, and then we will, um, after that, when we do the process pieces, uh, that will be, a, usually there's a two, we do two two people teams to come in and review uh, those core processes. And we will sit down with a leader and the people within the function 
uh, and have them walk us through what they do, uh, and we'll listen to them uh, as well. Uh, and again, that work has to be on site, even if we have to schedule it across multiple weeks, because I need to be able to actually see the work. Uh, it's not just, we prefer to do those meetings actually where the work's done, not, not in a conference room, but actually in their work area. So we can actually go, they can go pull samples, they can show us things, they can pull up a screen to say, here's how we have to do this. Um, so those are, that's all site work. Um, and um, the workshop typically, the, like the chastity, I told you that the monthly meetings are usually virtual, those 30 minute meetings. Her uh, walkthrough of data uh, are kind of both virtual and some on site. It depends on what she's covering. Sometimes uh, she just can't, it's just not good to do it virtual, right? You, you need to be there and see people and kind of, especially if it's complex data. Uh, our workshop meetings uh, typically uh, depends on how we do uh, an initial one. Um, might be on, might be virtual, and then we might, when we bring the leaders in, we might come back. We would do that on site. Does that make sense? Um, we're, 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 we work in your area a lot. Uh, uh, it, for the last two months, I've been in Louisiana almost every other week, and so uh, it's easy for us to stop in if we need to. It, it's not hard. The other thing is that we are, we're able to spread our cost. Uh, if that makes sense, by doing those multiple pro those multiple projects, some of our travel costs we can spread. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions? <clears throat> well, I think that's it. Um, thank you for your time this evening. Um, I will reach out to you shortly. We have our board meeting next Thursday, and that is when um, a contract will be approved. So I will okay. be. So thank you again. Great. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Purvis, would you let us know when we're ready to proceed to the next agenda item? Are we are we at a point where we can? Ms. Idell? Um, yes. Okay, so those were our two top scores. Um, briefly, I wanted to go over um, a little bit more information regarding the two proposers. So, like I said, we had four proposals. Um, the top two were Lean Frog and MGT of America. Um, there was a pretty good difference between the two. Lean Frog came in scoring the highest score, and then MGT of America after. Um, the primary, a primary reason for that was the price. Um, MGT of America, their final price that was given was $179,794. And then Lean Frog came in at $67,896.10. Our scoring mechanism when it comes to price is standard and consistent amongst all our RFPs. Um, the 30 points gets awarded to the lowest price, and then the other proposers get a proportional amount of that 30. So MGT of America, um, their price, their points for their price was 11 points per evaluator, where Lean Frog got 30 points because they set the bar at the lowest price. Um, so I just want to give um, give you all that information, and um, I think that's pretty much everything I have. Um, if you all have any questions, um, I don't know specifics about the proposals, but I know I can answer questions about the process. Then they, how, how many points did they win by? They won hmm, 108. So the 20 from the price really 
Yes. If you, when. It wasn't much. Well, the, so when I projected, um, we were supposed to have seven evaluators. We ended up with six. And if you take the 30 points for, per the, each evaluator, you're talking without adding any other factors into the evaluation, Lean Frog has 180 points just based on price. Um, MGT of America would only have 68 points because of price. So there's such a grave um, separation in the price that it obviously it's going to show up in the points. Were there any other um, parameters where MGT excelled over Lean Frog that kind of that would have closed the gap as far as performance base, or were they pretty much neck and neck the whole way out, and then leap, Lean Frog leaped? I don't the have the price. actual um, the individual score sheets in front of me. Um, I would say I would say between them two that price was the big factor. Um, I want to say I remember everybody was pretty impressed by both proposals. Um, so it was price. Did the board members see the see the points? Yeah, I saw it in there. It, and which, I know what you're asking. Yeah. Did, did, the, did the price just uh, close the gap? No, they were both very close. Mm -hmm. And then the price difference was just Boom, leap frog ahead. Oh, leap frog, leap, learn leap. What is Lean it? frog. Lean frog. frog, I'm sorry. Learn, pop them ahead. Uh, but but as far as their their service, the things we saw on the points, everything else similar. is pretty much yeah, there. Yeah, pretty much there. And then the price just. Boom, yeah, Lean up. frog got max points on everything. Oh, wow. So they were, keep going, sorry. Go ahead. So they were the low bidder and they were $112,000 cheaper. I mean, not the low bidder. They won the scoring. The scoring with the and, and their one hundred twelve thousand yes. dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. Well, according to my math as well, if we do have some add-ons, they're at one hundred and fifty dollars an hour, and MGT was at two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm sure that they may get in and find some deficiencies, and we may need some extra help. And so, when it comes down to it, if they were neck and neck with everything else. Lean frog continues to be leaner. Right. Even if we did have to add on extra hours, yeah. uh, it would well, be a lot of extra hours to make up that $112,000 gap. And I, was, I was on the scoring committee for that. And one thing that I noticed is that lean frog does a lot of uh, these schools down in the south. Um, so they're familiar with all that. And, and I think that that helped when we were looking at it, seeing that they would see schools that are similar to what we have, too. You know, and be able to kind of look back on things that they've done for cost savings and all. Was there anything that impressed y'all the most about either one of them? Like, did y'all find MGT just like wow, y'all? It doesn't seem like it so far. Like anything that on this wow, or on, with, on, when we were back at the when y'all were by yourselves. Was there anything that stood out with either one of them that wowed y'all that? It, it was very similar from what I saw. The wow and was lean frog to me on the data points and the data that the actual things they do inside. That was really. I think that was impressive. You know, one of the things that impressed me with lean frog is they not only developed the recommendations, they also help you develop a roadmap on how do you get to those recommendations and give you a timeline so that the board can set priorities. Because with all due respect, I don't. I don't think this is a we're going to get a report and then we're going to make all these adjustments. I think there has to be a roadmap built into how these adjustments are made. And for not, for me tonight, that was uh, something that I noticed on Lean Frog that I thought was very uh, useful. I guess useful is the right in the, in the detailed reports they were showing, you know. Me personally, I feel like I understand more what Lean Frog is going to come in here and do versus MGT. I don't feel like... I still don't know what MGT was going to do, but I feel like with Lean Frog. In, in y'all's meeting, though, y'all never saw a final report that they would hand back as far as that part goes, other than I guess I requested just to look. So between now and. Well, they did provide the, in, in the documentation many examples of studies they've done. Now, not the actual study. They detailed out what they did in those yeah. those different. I, I'd just like to see one of them, a final that was what it looked like, what it looked like, and how it's presented, or even how like in their 
in their um, submittal, they provided the school boards or the school systems and the superintendent and their contact information. So, like, theoretically, you could get on the phone or email them is what I was thinking and just say, like, hey, how was your experience? Did you feel like this was useful? Did you feel like this was worth your time and money? You know, I, I've had conversations with other superintendents. Obviously, there, there are numerous ones that I know. I, I, want, I want to be clear on something that, you know, those superintendents, to me, at least what they've expressed to me is they were very pleased with the services from this this organization, but I want everybody to understand that everybody needs to understand this is an, going to be an intrusive process into all the departments, into our leaders, and to our employees. And with all due respect, I think that's what it should be. But you know, I, I think that we need to be aware that you know, there's going to be some hard questions and some hard decisions that's going to have to be made here. But if we truly want to look for ways to save, you know, in this district, then I think that's the direction we ought to go. From the your contacts and people, how did they say that result was or how they handled that particular part of that from well, you know, the, I, the I feedback, you, I guess, from the I district. haven't seen Ascension's final product, but I have talked. You know, David Alexander was the superintendent down there for a long, long time. He said, he said, I want you to understand that you, you know, you're going to have to do some internalization here and you're going to have to make some decisions or the board's going to have to make some decisions and everybody needs to understand some of those decisions might be very, very difficult decisions. But from my understanding, one of the things that I've heard the most is this gentleman that you saw on the presentation tonight is a very personable guy. I've spoken to him at, at conferences and where I've been. He is very much hands-on. So I think that's what you're asking is, is this going to be uh, a process and, and that's about it. I don't believe that to be true. I think they really come down and they engage with our employees in this process. What do we move forward with tonight? Are we as a committee going to make a re decide amongst ourselves on a recommendation to make to the board or are we just going to? Yes, sir. That, we, we got another agenda item. and. Uh, I think, Miss Miss Idell, do you have a recommendation for the cost savings committee off of this? I do. Um, I think we need to probably go to the uh, Mr. Sharp, if we could please, <clears throat> unless there's other questions on this, if we could please proceed to the next <laughs> agenda item. Any more questions? Agenda item number three: consideration to ratify a proposal received on May seventeenth, twenty twenty-three. For RFP 23-12, district-wide comprehensive review. Ms. Idell? Um, yes, the proposals received on July 6, 2023, um, were for the RF, RFP 23-12, district-wide comprehensive education review. Um, based on the evaluation criteria set forth in said solicitation, um, staff recommends contract award to Lean Frog Business Solutions as the offer, offer whose proposal is the most advantageous to Livingston Parish Public Schools. I'll make a motion. We accept it. Mr. Harris made a motion. Yeah. Dr. And Morris second the motion. Those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Any other comments? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Dr. Matt Morris made a motion. Mr. Harris, second. Mr. Gallo, meeting adjourned.